Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Year Six uh, New Intake Information Evening. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Phil Hansen, head teacher. Uh, very pleased to welcome uh, new students and parents uh, to this um, evening, and hope that you find the uh, content useful. I'm also pleased to welcome colleagues uh, who I'll introduce as we go through, uh, and also we've invited our new staff who are joining us in September. So if you're uh, with us, uh, you're welcome as well, uh, listening in on um, our presentation to new parents. It's really strange uh, that uh, this year, um, uh, when we have such a major change in terms of our uh, school uh, arrangements, taking on uh, year seven for the first time in almost 50 years uh, in the, of the school's history um, since we last had a year seven. And it's really strange that we haven't been able to meet face to face. And I apologise that the current arrangements do not allow that to uh, to happen. Um, and I also am also conscious that you may not have been to an open evening either. Uh, and so parents, you may not have seen and students, you may not have seen much of the school. Uh, we hope that things will be back to normal in September and that we will be able to run things like open evening. And so you will have an opportunity to come in and see where um, your children are spending their time. Um, uh, and we'll let you know more about that in uh, the autumn term. So I'm going to just uh, go back to the presentation and uh, uh, let you know that um, although there is a, a chat function um, in this, this evening's presentation, um, feel free to use that to um, to let us have any questions that you may um, that may remain unanswered. We aren't going to answer them directly today. We are going to um, pull those together uh, and put them into a frequently asked questions document, which um, uh, we will publish to you later. So, um, and you can also, of course, use our uh, dedicated uh, email addresses for uh, any further uh, questions that you might have or any clarification that you require. So, uh, I'm going to introduce you uh, to the first of this evening's presenters, and that is uh, Zoe Budding. Good evening, everyone, and um, my name is Zoe Budding. I'm the assistant head teacher in charge of our pastoral system, um, and I hope that through the evening um, you will see that at Persia High School we pride ourselves on our pastoral care. Um, our young people are only ready to learn when they are healthy and happy. Um, we know that school is more than exam results, and we want to grow independent, courageous individuals with the confidence to absolutely nail life in modern Britain. And um, as the presentation goes on, you'll see how we do this. This is part of our value statement, our core principles. My absolute favourite part of our value statement is always be kind, never ignore unkindness. And while I think any school would struggle to say that their students are never unkind, it is our ethos and our aim for all of our students to become kind and caring individuals. Thank you, Zoe. Um, Zoe will be back later to, to tell us a little bit more about um, pastoral arrangements. So next I'm going to introduce uh, Dennis Campbell. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dennis Campbell and I'm the Director of Learning Support and Inclusion. I wanted to outline briefly how we support our students with SEND and I hope to be able to put your mind at rest as I know the move to high school can be particularly challenging for our students with additional needs. At Persia High School, there's a firm emphasis on the traditional values of good behaviour, mutual respect and excellent attendance, and we welcome everyone into our school community. We have high expectations for all of our students and we follow an inclusive approach to teaching and learning to ensure all of our students, regardless of their underlying need, have the opportunity to succeed. We have some fantastic facilities to support our students with SEND and this is split over two levels. Uh, our mainstream autism base is upstairs and has capacity for 15 students with an EHCP. Our inclusion centre is on the ground floor and we have within that a learning support classroom for targeted interventions, a pastoral mentor, a dyslexia support room with a dyslexia specialist, an adapted bathroom and two further intervention and sensory spaces. We're quite lucky with the facilities that we have. The triangle on the right hand side aims to show you the, the levels or waves of support that we offer and all of our students will fall into the first category in the first instance. And within this level, we ensure all students receive their universal entitlement to quality first teaching. And at this level, also staff are provided with strategies to support students with SEND within the classroom. Um, and they may have an IEP at this point. As you can see in the triangle, the amount of students will decrease in size as we go up. 
following the graduated response to SEND, which is laid out on our school website within our SEND information policy. Unfortunately, as a result of ongoing restrictions, we haven't we've been unable to have a structured transition day or coffee morning for you and your children. However, we hope that you've been able to make it to our summer school, which we've been recently been given the go ahead to arrange. You will already have received most of this information, uh, but just to quickly outline our summer school aims. Summer school will run from Thursday the 22nd to Wednesday the 28th of July. And for year seven, this will run from 12 in the afternoon to 3.30 each day. I'm aware that some of you may not be able to make it and that's totally fine. I'm also aware that for some of you, you may not be able to commit to the original planned four out of the five days, but we want to have as many students attend as possible. So we're happy to accommodate less days if that's your preference. Finally, the aim of the summer school uh, will not be to catch up for learning, but rather to provide students with an opportunity to get used to their new school, familiarise themselves in their new environment and to get a taste of all that we have to offer at Persher High. And we're going to send out some more information uh, over the course of the, over the course of this week. Uh, thank you very much for listening and I look forward to meeting many of you in the very near future. Thank you very much, Dennis. And next we have uh, Andrew Nocton. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Nocton. I'm deputy head teacher and uh, one of my primary responsibilities is to oversee the transition process for all students who are new to the school. So it's very nice to meet you this evening and uh, look forward to seeing you in person in due course. Uh, just wanted to talk a little bit to start with this evening about our, our overall approach to teaching and learning. Uh, you'll see from the uh, uh, information on the screen that there are a number of attributes and characteristics and skills that we'd love our students to develop during their time with us here at Pershaw High School. Uh, we believe that one of our key missions is really to develop all of the students to be lifelong learners. And what that means is we're trying to equip them with these skills and characteristics and attributes so that they can apply them in a variety of contexts, both whilst they're with us during their school career, but more importantly, once they leave too. We all know that knowledge is very important. We know that knowledge in certain areas is certainly required to pass examinations and we should be doing our utmost to make sure that knowledge acquisition and retention is a high priority for us. But I think, as we all know, the knowledge base changes really very quickly and it's most important that students are able to learn and learn in different contexts. And that's really what we're trying to equip the students for. So hopefully, whilst we've already said we're not just an examination factory, examinations are a key priority, clearly, but we're hoping to equip all of our students with the skills that they need for later life too. Thank you. Uh, as part of this, we have a framework that we use where students can develop how to learn. Uh, what you'll see on this particular slide are some of the characteristics in black, the kind of things that we don't want our students to be exhibiting. However, we're aware that they will do on certain occasions in certain situations. So one of the things that we prioritise is trying to teach the students strategies to how to make sure these characteristics don't come to the fore. And so by looking at the characteristics in red and what we call the five R's, we develop and practice right from uh, year seven with the students, developing skills in these areas to try to counteract the things that are likely to make them dependent learners, which is not what we want. And therefore we hope by developing the five R's and everything to do with the five R's in various situations across the curriculum and beyond, the students will become much more independent in their learning. And ultimately that's obviously what we're trying to develop. Thank you. Um, I hope you've been able to access our year six transition web page. Uh, one thing we're very aware of uh, and, and would assume to be the case is that most students are currently feeling two emotions. We hope that the most students are excited about joining the high school in September and we're very much excited about them doing so. However, it's perfectly normal for students also to feel either slightly nervous or, or anxious. And um, one of the things that we see as our main job to try to alleviate that is by providing as much useful information as we can, because that nervousness or that anxiety usually comes through an element of the unknown. And whilst obviously, as Mr Hansen said, sadly, we're not as much doing as much face to face activity as we planned and hoped to. By providing as much information as we can, hopefully students will feel more comfortable before they join us formally. So just a reminder that on the web page uh, you'll find sort of three main things. It's updated every week on a Monday. So down the right hand side there are our key staff, most of whom are in this meeting this evening. 
Uh, down the centre is a, an updated message for that particular week, just with an outline of, of what the activities are that have been put onto the website and any general updates. And then down the left hand side, there are links to any resources that we've added to the website. So on the top left, the principle is that those activities and resources are usually for the students themselves. And then on the bottom of the page towards the uh, on the left hand side is, is any documentation and resources that we've previously published to parents. So if you're just wanting to check back to find something, then uh, that, that will be the place to do it. Similarly, uh, from tomorrow, a recording of this meeting and probably more importantly, the PowerPoint presentation that we're using during it will separately be available on the website. So if you'd like to go back and check something or use any of the links that we're providing, uh, then you're able to do so uh, when that's just uploaded uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, just a word about what the weekly updates uh, include. Uh, if you've already had a look at last week's, you'll know that they were about activities surrounding getting to know you. So this is information that the students could complete that will be able to provide for their tutor in due course, just so that the tutor can find out a bit more information about their individual students and tutees. Uh, the information can be completed electronically and in due course emailed, or it could be printed out and, and printed and, and completed in hard copy form, in which case it will be brought along in September. Either is absolutely fine, but it's just if it's helpful uh, for the tutor just to have a, a bit of information completed by the student. Uh, similarly, in due course, there'll be a bit, a bit of information coming the student's way um, about the tutor in the form of a, a mini bio, biography or, or similar. Uh, this week's activities that went up on Monday are to help the students find their way around the school site. So the information that's been loaded so far involves a few tasks that the students can have a go at that involve using a school site map and also using a copy of a dummy timetable, which will be very similar to the one that they uh, have in September. So if you're able to have a look at those, then that would be really helpful just to start familiarising the students with that information. And then either later on this week or just early next week, there'll be a, a virtual tour of the school so that the students can start to see in reality what they've maybe been imagining by looking at the map and just completing the activities. Uh, as Mr Hansen said at the start, we've been gathering uh, frequently asked questions over the last few weeks, either from assembly visits that we've done to the individual schools or from the uh, email that we've published for a few weeks now where questions have been coming in, or again, just as a reminder from the Q&A function on this particular presentation. So we're just going to um, accumulate all of those questions, answer them for you and put those out in a document uh, on this same website next week. And then finally, in the final few days of term, we'll just update the website with uh, any start of term information for September. Uh, we're just uh, getting to grips with the information that's been published in the last few uh, days. Uh, you're aware, thank you, that school will start for year six students into year seven on Monday, the 6th of September. And as such, it's only new students who are in school on that day. Uh, but we've obviously been told also there'll be a staggered start to the year uh, due to testing arrangements and new protocols that the Department for Education has put in place for schools. So as soon as we're able to find out a bit more about that and, and plan for that start, we'll publish that information to you as, uh, as soon as we can. Thank you. Uh, just finally from me in this section, just a, a bit of a information about our curriculum and about our teaching groups. So on the screen here, you can see how our Key Stage 3 curriculum works in Year 7. So uh, there's 14 subjects just on the screen. Uh, hopefully the students are excited about the opportunities that all of those will bring. Some of them might even be new to the students in that current form. And you can see roughly the distribution of lessons. Now those lessons take place across a two week timetable. So in order to fit that many, le that many different subjects in, we have five one hour lessons a day, so 25 lessons a week, but 50 lessons over a two week timetable. And one of the student things the students will need to get used to is the organisation required just for making sure they're equipped correctly for the right day, depending on whether it's week one on their timetable or week two. Uh, something else you'll just notice is obviously the emphasis on the core subjects. So more lessons are afforded to English, maths and science, as you'd expect. And then you can see the general distribution across the other subjects uh, just from on the screen. Thank you. 
And just finally from me, uh, a word just about the teaching groups. Uh, we're expecting 90 students into uh, year seven and they'll be distributed across four classes and the numbers will roughly equate to the sizes that you can see on the screen. So obviously based on the information that we've received from uh, feeder middle and primary schools, we'll be distributing the students accordingly with a couple of sets which are sort of mixed more able in terms of their ability, uh, one that's a bit more of an intermediate set and then a group also that might have uh, students in it who uh, may require some more support from Mr Campbell and colleagues in his department. So we distribute the students according to the information that we've had. That information comes in two forms really. It comes in hard data form from assessments that the students have completed and, and work that's, that's been passed on. But we also spend a lot of time having face to face meetings with the colleagues in the schools to get to know about the individual students, both on a pastoral and an academic level, and that we use the recommendations from the colleagues in the schools, plus the information we've received to uh, ad adopt students to a particular group. I will just say that um, these groups aren't then fixed in stone. So obviously, as we undertake our own baseline uh, testing, as we will do early in the autumn term, and then obviously as we grow into the year with assessments in the autumn term in all subjects, if it appears that a student's not been placed correctly in the right group, then that can be adjusted. So we obviously hope that we've done that from the beginning. It's rare that students usually do get moved because they, they don't need to, but we do recognise that if for any reason a student's not in an appropriate group, then we are able to move them. And then finally, just a word about the different subjects. So the groupings I've just outlined is where students will study the subjects under the linear list. So for all of those particular subjects, they'll be in the groupings previously outlined. However, uh, for technology PE and PSHE, the groups will be more of an even spread of four mixed ability groups. And then for maths and science, the groups will be slightly different again with students set for those two subjects in more of a one, two, three, four setting order um, according to again the information that we have. So there'll be more information to come on this in September but that just gives you a rough idea and students are likely to find out their teaching groups with their timetable at the very start of the autumn term. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, Andrew. Um, our next group of presenters are our three heads of house and the first one of these to speak tonight is Ed Turfrey. OK, um, my name is Edward Turfrey. I'm head of Kingsley House. Um, myself and Mr Oakley in the Kingsley House office uh, extend a really warm welcome to all new Kingsley students, duties and of course parents. Um, we're looking forward to tees to um, supporting you, guiding you through your time here at the school, helping them, you to make the most of your learning and helping you to make the very most, the very best of the opportunities that are available to you here at Pershore High. Thank you. At Pershore High, we have a vertical tutoring system. This means that each tutor group has students from each year group in it. So there's a mix of year groups within each tutor group. Um, every tutor group within the school is, is, is part of one of the three houses, Armstrong, Kingsley or Magellan. And within each house, there are 15 tutor groups. What you'll find is that there'll be in your tutor group, there should be around four to five year seven students in the group. And then you will also have students from every other year group there. Um, what you'll find if you've already got a sibling in the school, you'll be in the same house. So you could expect that to happen. Um, we feel that the vertical tutoring system works really, really well. It brings students together from all year groups and in, in its own way has a real family feel to it. You'll find you'll make you'll make friends from other year groups um, and we find that students can help each other, advise each other at different times of their school career. Thank you. So every day you'll be in your tutor group twice a day. Actually, it's not very long within the context of the school day. 8.50 to 9am, important to be there on time. We register you, there'll be daily notices and quite importantly, there'll be sometimes you'll find you'll have a room change and that's when you'll find out about that. 
in the afternoon, you have a longer session in the tutor, tutor from 10 past two to 2.30. That's directly after lunch. And that's the time where we have a range of different uh, um, opportunities and activities for you to engage with. So here's the tutor time week. Um, on Mondays, we try and get the week kicked off by celebrating any achievements that you that you might have achieved during your time um, at the school or indeed outside school. So if you're doing something outside school that you're proud of, that you'd like to let us know about, let your tutor know. But we also keep an eye on organisation and we try and make sure that you're ready to learn. So making sure that you've got the right equipment for the week, that you're dressed in the correct uniform. Those things are so important. On Tuesdays, um, well, on Tuesdays recently, we've been having sessions on things that we might think are important to help and support students. So, for example, recently there was a session on to help students with use of social media, different things like that to help you um, to, to survive the process of working your way through the school. On Wednesdays, the best day of the week, I'm sure, house assembly. OK, I know for sure every student looks forward to Wednesdays. Um, I love a good assembly and we try really, really hard to make them interesting to students, entertaining if we can. And if I've got to be honest, if we get back to some degree of normality in September, we really enjoy inviting guest speakers in to speak to students. On Thursdays, a few things we can do on Thursdays. Um, we have Futures Thursday. And that, what we've been doing with that is actually doing some career sessions and introducing students in the tutor groups to different careers that might interest them for their own futures. Um, sometimes we do quiet reading some, um, on Fridays, fun day of the week, quiz day. So that pops off the tutor time week. Um, there's something for everybody, I'm sure. And just to finish, I can't wait to see and meet all of you in September and I hope you have a brilliant summer. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. And next, uh, Rachel Kilmister. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Armstrong House. Um, I am Rachel Kilmister, head of Armstrong, um, and I am joined um, in the Armstrong office by uh, Mrs Knight, who is my deputy. Um, you might have noticed that the kind of the rocket sat behind me. I think Mr. Mr. Hansen's moved on already, but um, that's our logo for the house that we are uh, quite proud to uh, represent. Um, I'd like to kind of um, just welcome you and say how proud we are of all of you um, uh, for being selected to wear our green ties uh, and being Armstrong House. So Armstrong students always um, make me really proud. I'm proud to be head of Armstrong. Um, but they always kind of strive or we hope they strive to work together as a team to support each other um, and to be the best we can. One of the ways that you can do that is to get involved in school life and as a high school we hope that we offer extracurricular activities for a range of different people with different interests. Um, you by getting involved in school life not only develop your own skills but build your team working skills, um, get to know new people. Um, we, we offer a range of kind of subjects um, that we cover um, extracurricular um, activities for. You can do anything from sports clubs to performing arts, subject clubs. Um, we even have an equestrian team that I am super proud to run as well. By taking part in them, generally uh, you will get awarded points as well and points always mean prizes. Um, so we all ask, ask all students to work towards um, getting as many house points as they can um, to represent us um, at Armstrong in the House Cup. Um, and it's really important that we kind of get everybody working together in order to do that. One of the ways we record our points is on ePraise. And so every point goes towards kind of helping Armstrong win. Parents are emailed um, when Armstrong, when sorry, when Armstrong, when students meet different milestones um, and we recognise those achievements in assemblies as well. You can earn your points by taking parts in different clubs, by um, like taking part in different things in school, by helping, by excellent effort in class. All those types of things will earn you e-praise points. Your parents get to see whenever you get a milestone or an achievement um, and we want it to, to encourage you to excel in lessons and around school. 
Parents, for you, we also use this not just to kind of send you how well your child's doing in terms of achievements um, and things that they've worked towards, how, how many points they've got, but also um, so that you can see what homework they have. So all of our homework is put onto ePraise um, by staff and um, you as a parent can track uh, what homework they have, when it's due, what they need to complete and often kind of worksheets and anything like that is attached to it as well. All the login information will be sent to you very shortly, um, but um, you will use ePraise more than anything um, in terms of your organisation, um, in terms of completing homework, but also your timetables and everything like that will be on it as well. I really, really look forward to welcoming you all to Armstrong House um, in September. I know it's been a very strange year and I'm you know, really disappointed that we haven't managed to see you as yet, um, but I can't wait to welcome you all um, and look forward to um, seeing you all then. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rachel. And our final head of house is uh, Paul Watson. Good evening, everybody. My name's Paul Watson. I'm head of Magellan House. I'd like to welcome you all to this evening and hopefully uh, you'll all be here in September chomping at the bit to get stuck in and make the most of your opportunities. Uh, my deputy head of house is Miss Mrs Childs who's currently on maternity leave so we're likely to have somebody else um, for the first part of your um, stay with us. Thank you. Uh, just a little outline of the school day. This is uh, what we would normally do. Uh, it's been a little bit different this year, but hopefully we're going back to normal in September. So as Mr Turfey said, we have a registration in the morning. You need to be in your registration at 8.50 in order to not be late. And as he said, we get lots of important information at morning registration and uh, being late makes it difficult for you to understand what's going on in the school day, especially if there's been any changes. After registration, you'll have two lessons, period one and two, and that's followed by a 20 minute break. After break, you'll have another two lessons, period three and four, and that's followed by lunch and then tutor time and assembly, as has already been outlined. And then we have just one lesson in the afternoon before we finish at 3.30. Thank you. Uh, the uh, equipment list is really important. Um, Mr Nocton alluded to the two week timetable and making sure you're prepared, um, having all the right stuff with you. Uh, that equipment list you should have with you all day, every day. You're not necessarily going to use it all day, uh, but from subject to subject, you could be called upon to use any of those items of equipment. Um, so it's important that you have that with you and you keep it with you all week. I liken it to a, an electrician going to work and one day he might be using his screwdrivers, the next day he might be using his spanners, but he's going to take all of his equipment with him because he doesn't doesn't necessarily know what job he's going to be end, end up being sorry, excuse me, end up doing. So it is important that you are well equipped and you have that equipment with you every day. The uniform, it would be great if we all came in September wearing the correct uniform, um, you are required to wear it. And it's also a requirement to wear to and from school. Um, extreme fashions, tram lines cut into haircuts, um, outrageous dye colours, et cetera, et cetera not tolerated so don't go on the last day of the summer holidays and have your head shaved and something drawn into it or have it dyed a, a bizarre colour um, it would be nice for us all to start the term on a good footing um, all of these items of clothing um, are available uh, at school togs you should ensure that uh, ties blazers etc etc do have your child's name in it. Um, it makes it really easy to return any sort of lost items or mislaid items to the rightful owners. Um, school togs, as I said, or the school shop. A lot of items you can buy at uh, supermarkets, things like school trousers, uh, shirts, etc. However, there are some items that we uh, need that uh, are specific. So for instance, the girls skirts, that is a specific type of skirt in order to try and avoid a lot of uh, interesting variations on it. And obviously the blazer and the ties, um, you need to get those from um, school togs. 
Uh, one of the things, school shoes need to be a leather type of shoe, not a cross, uh, cross shoe between trainer and shoe. So formal school shoes uh, are, are what is required. Um, the full uniform list um, is in the transition booklet and you can also find that on the website. So just to finish, really looking forward to seeing you all in September. It is a shame we haven't had a chance to meet face to face uh, up, up to now, but I'm sure September will come and it won't take you long. I know some of you will be nervous and a little bit worried. The school is a much bigger site than you're used to, but I can absolutely assure you within two cycles of the timetable, so within a month, you'll all know who your teachers are, you'll know where your classrooms are, and you'll be finding your way around no problem. So even though you might be a little bit worried about it now, don't be. Enjoy your summer. We're all here to help you when you arrive, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. I'm going to hand back to Zoe Budding. Uh, hi, everyone. Can I just check you can hear me? I've lost all picture. Yes, we can. Perfect. OK, so I'm just going to be relying on you to put the right slide on, Miss Danson. Um, hi, everyone. We're going to just talk a little bit about um, support for students uh, within school. Um, and just as um, Dennis Campbell uh, spoke about the layers of support for students with SEND, um, we work on the same principle for general student support. So everybody in school has access to a tutor. Their tutor leads the tutor group um, and the tutor will be the person that sees uh, your child every day uh, for a bit of a check in. It will be the person that they will see every day to ask questions um, and that would be the person that looks out for them and um, potentially would be your first port of call um, for any issues. Subject teachers would always be available for help with homework or with um, anything to do with classwork or, or, or subject based areas. Um, so your child can go and talk to their subject teachers about particular issues. If there is a bit, a bit of additional support needed, say, for example, with friendship issues or with you know, any issues that, um, uh, that arise, the heads of house and deputy heads of house uh, will be in their house offices um, at certain times of the day and they will be able to give a little bit more help where that is needed. In school, we also have access to a wellbeing mentor and to uh, the school nurse and we have access to a number of external sources for help with all sorts of issues. So, for example, we may contact targeted family support or CAMS or Footsteps, the local bereavement charity, um, etc. Um, specialist help, um, which is required for specialist issues. Our early help offer is on our website and that outlines all of the agencies that we might refer to or we might signpost you to um, for any additional support. You'll find that on the safeguarding and wellbeing page. If you scroll down, there's a blue triangle just like the one you saw on the send slides. Um, and if you click um, tier three for external support or more support, um, you will be able to find our early help offer. Next slide, please, Ms. Danson. Um, as I still can't see it, I'm hoping that on the screen uh, I'll tell you you are on to non-negotiables. Non Perfect. Um, so non-negotiables uh, outline how we expect our students to behave and to act. Um, I won't read them out because I can't, um, but I'm sure you're doing that uh, yourselves right now. Um, but you will see that our overarching points um, are about being responsible. So responsible for uh, work, for homework, for uniform, for being where you're supposed to be and turning up and doing all the things that you're supposed to do. And secondly, for making an effort, making an effort in lessons and making an effort to be part of the school community and join in clubs and um, extracurricular activities. Thank you. OK. We are um, happy with and positively encourage students to um, have mobile phones on the way to and from school for safety, but we do have very, very strict mobile phone rules in school. So here it is. It's simple. At 8.50, the phone needs to be switched off and put into a bag or zipped pocket and it's not taken out again until 3.30. You will have read the mobile phone contract. Um, if phones are seen or heard in school time, and that does include break time and lunch time, phones aren't allowed at those times either, the phones will be confiscated. 
There might be times that you wish to get hold of your child, your child wishes to get hold of you. So if you ring the school, if you need to speak to your child or get a message to your child, and we will make sure that happens. Um, and students will go to their house office or student hub, um, which is an area of reception just for students, um, and we'll make sure that we can facilitate a phone call home. Thank you. OK. And um, lastly from me is just a little word about Pupil Premium. The Pupil Premium grant is funding given to schools to assist with education and initiatives for the benefit of um, disadvantaged students within school. There are a number of reasons to be eligible for Pupil Premium and they're listed on the slide. Um, there are a number of um, things that we use our money for and that is to support grouping, um, teaching and learning, recruitment and retention, pastoral care, uh, individual review vision guides and curriculum trips. Our Pupil Premium strategy is on the website if you would like further details. Thank you. Thank you very much Mrs Budding and well done for doing that without <laughs> being able to see the, the, the slides. I'm going to hand back to uh, uh, Andrew Nocton who I hope will be able to see the slides. Uh, thank you, I can indeed, which is lucky. Uh, just going to, to finish the presentation this evening by just running you through a few items which will make the transition process smoother if they've been able to be organised in advance. So thank you where you've already made a start with these as parents and carers. And if you haven't yet, if I could draw your attention to them, that would be much appreciated. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a, a system in school called Parent Pay. Uh, which as you can see on the slide is an attempt just to make sure there's no cash or checks or, or money uh, from within school and that uh, we ask parents to use this where possible as an e-payment method for all kinds of things connected with the school. Uh, the most prominent one and probably the most regular one is to pay for uh, school meals so it's a, it's a cashless catering system albeit it could be also trips or music lessons or, or, or anything else in that regard. Uh, what that means is it's a biometric system. Uh, the students will pay using a f their fingerprint effectively. And the process on this slide, just on the bottom left hand corner, is the one that we just need to run through in the coming weeks. So uh, we've already uh, made available a consent form. Again, thank you if you've already returned that. Uh, we shall be providing you uh, before the end of term uh, login details, sort of username and password to make your unique account. And we then ask that you add some credit to that account so it becomes active and available for your son or daughter. Uh, at an early opportunity, either through the summer school or at the beginning of September, if that wasn't possible, uh, we'll just take the finger scan of each individual student so the system can then be up and running. And uh, one thing the student can do uh, periodically is there's a balance checking facility, uh, a machine, if you like, or a form of the machine that students can use around the school just to make sure that they're always in credit. Uh, just a reassurance, if a student is uh, gone to the till and there's no credit on there, they can just go to the finance office just to get a, a slip just for permission, just on that one off opportunity uh, for them to get their food, even though there's a zero money on there or to contact you in order just to pop some money on there. That's obviously not something we do routinely, but as a kind of a one off thing, then a student's never going to be refused food on a day uh, if there's a zero balance just on that account. Uh, a couple of other things just to bear in mind when we go on to that, if we just move to the next slide, thank you, is that there's a number of uh, benefits which this system brings. Uh, we've had it in place now for a, a, a good long while and these were the benefits that we hoped would be the case and they certainly are. So I'm not going to go and run through them in detail. They're there for you, thank you, just to have a look at. But the one thing we will say, a bit like ePraise, what it does do is allow you as parents and carers just to keep a track of what's being bought and to monitor purchases within the school canteen. Uh, obviously from our part we're built by, uh, sorry, guided by the regulations in terms of healthy food and a healthy offering and we also try and balance that with food that will be appealing to uh, to students to buy. So we, the students like the, the, the dining room, like the facility which is known as the Pershaw Kitchen. Uh, it offers both cold food, it offers hot plated food and it offers sort of pasta pots to take as well, uh, take away. So there's quite a lot of variety. Um, if when setting up the account, if you have any issues, if you could just email the finance team on the address on the slide, then uh, they'll be able to help you and sort those out quickly. Thank you. Uh, just moving on briefly to school transport. 
Uh, obviously, uh, students will come to Pershaw High School in September through a variety of forms, uh, as you will do. Thank you. If their students are walking or cycling, if you could just have a practice of the route with them before September, uh, that, that would be much appreciated. We do put a lot of store on as pedestrians or cyclists following the highway code, making sure everybody's being respectful to everyone else who's trying to get to school and making sure that they're following the rules to avoid unnecessary accidents. Uh, similarly, if you're bringing your son or daughter by car, then we would ask that you only drop them off and collect them from what is the north car park, the larger car parking area near to Pershaw Station, uh, the one also which has direct access to our AstroTurf facility. So a not park in the car park are directly adjacent to the bus bay or indeed go in the bus bay either. Thank you. That just makes things run smoother. And finally, if uh, students are coming using school transport or public transport, the information that you will need if you've not organised this already are on the next three slides. So I've included those in the presentation mostly for informational purposes, not to go through them in detail. You'll see just on the slide before, if we could just go back one, sorry Mr Hanson if that's OK, thank you. Uh, you'll see the reasons as to why you might be entitled to assistance with school transport. And then even if you don't uh, satisfy those criteria, there's possibilities as why you might still be able to access assistance, particularly through what's known as a vacant seat scheme uh, that's always reviewed uh, in the latter part of the summer term and early part of the uh, the autumn, uh, early part of the summer, excuse me, and early part of the autumn term. So please just do get in touch to find out what's required. Uh, just now on to the next slide, thank you. Uh, that gives you the website directly used for school transport at the County Council. It gives you an idea of what facilities are on there as to what you might need to be able to do and how to apply. And it just highlights in yellow that there's an online application tracker. So once you've made your application, you can just see how it's getting on. Uh, one thing that they do mention is that if you apply no later than the end of the summer term, then hopefully things will be in place for the autumn term. If we could just move on, Mr Hanson, thank you. So please try and apply before the end of the summer term to ensure that things are in place for the autumn term. Uh, one policy that the County Council do have is that it's very important once students have their bus pass that they bring it with them every single day. They actually have a no pass, no travel policy. So it's crucial as part of the student's equipment that they keep that zipped up probably in an inner blazer pocket to make sure that it's always where they need it to be. Uh, that said, there is again an amnesty at the start of term for a couple of weeks. Uh, everybody realises the students will have a lot on their plate in terms of organisation. So if they can get into the habit of doing that from day one, that would be much appreciated. However, there is an amnesty and students will be allowed to travel in the first couple of weeks, even if they don't have their pass with them. Thank you. Uh, one other thing I'd just like to draw your attention to is a, a new parents information evening that we have in the second week of term. More information will be published about this in due course. Hopefully this evening we've provided you with information that's most relevant to the context of you and the students now and help to set you up for September and as we said alleviate any nerves or anxiety. However there's much more information we'd like to give you and so we do that at the start of term once the students are nearly through a full timetable cycle. We broadly split the evening into two halves, uh, a bit more of an update on our approach to learning, an update on some of the areas we've already introduced this evening, but then also some new areas we haven't yet touched upon. And then we also spend part of the evening talking about student welfare. And there's a range of issues there that you can see which are pertinent to students being at the high school uh, that we'd like to share with you in a bit more detail at the start of term. Thank you. There's also just a summary slide here for reference uh, regarding the documentation that we've sent out. So top left, there's documentation that we've asked for you to return. Thank you again where you've done so. And if you haven't yet, if you could do that, that would be appreciated. Um, on the bottom left is information that we've sent out, which could be returned dependent upon your personal circumstances. So that might be required or may not uh, as you just look at it a bit further. At top right, there's the documents we've sent out simply for information that you should have received. Again, if you haven't received any of this documentation for any reason, apologies, but it is available on the transition page website. And then on the bottom right is the information you can still expect to receive, mostly in the form of usernames and passwords for things like uh, parent pay, for uh, ePraise, and also just generally for the students for their school email and Microsoft 365 accounts. Thank you. Uh, one of the things just to finish that may or may not apply is free school meals. 
Um, I'd just like to draw your attention to the fact that the Worcestershire Children's First are moving their system to online applications. And so it's the same portal uh, login and password that you would have used when applying for a place at Pershaw High School uh, originally. So the link is just there and gradually over the next few months, everybody who is free school meals will be expected to have made an online application. So if you're not sure whether or not you are eligible, then you can apply and get a fairly immediate answer. If you are, the County Council will provide you with a code which you then provide to us to get all the wheels in motion. Uh, one thing I will just say, because the system's still in development, I think it's possibly coming online maybe October if it hasn't already, is that all current recipients will need to go online eventually, uh, but it does mean that uh, the information that we already have passed to us about three school meal status will apply from the outset. And so there's no concern about free, mail, free school meal entitlement not being met uh, if you haven't managed to complete an online application. Uh, any questions and queries should just be directed to the free school meals team. The number's there. Uh, you will need your national insurance number and just a few personal details for any questions that you have. But hopefully all that again can be put in place ready for September. Thank you. And then just finally a reminder from me, uh, as you some uh, have, if you'd like to use the Q&A function just to post any questions now, ready for our frequently asked questions document, which will be published next week. You can still use the year six transition email address. And again, just keep abreast. Thank you of everything that's coming onto the year six transition page, just to make sure you're up to speed with all the information that we're, we're publishing. And then as a final reminder, again, this PowerPoint from tonight and the presentation recording will be available on the year six transition page from tomorrow. Uh, thank you again for your attendance. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you all in due course and uh, welcoming you to the school. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew, and thank you to all our presenters this evening. Thank you all very much for coming. I hope that that's been useful to you and that you will find the things that we're publishing in the coming days uh, also uh, very helpful to e ease the transition. Uh, I'd like to wish you all a very happy and healthy uh, summer holiday and hope that uh, some of the students will be joining us for the summer school um, at the start of the, of the holiday period. So uh, thank you very much for your attendance and, uh, uh, and, and enjoy your evening. Thank you all.